Good morning, ladies, gentlemen, friends, and fellow plumbers sitting over here thinking that they'll be becoming millionaires after this talk. A plumber's guide to being a millionaire. Sounds shady, even like a con scheme, right? But I do hope that by the end of this talk, you would all be convinced that it is possible for any of you to become millionaires, especially the plumbers. Let's start by looking at a very simple plumbing problem. A problem that is there for both the rich and the poor. And a problem that's been in existence since we have had taps. Yes, I'm talking about a leaking faucet. I know it is a very irritating thing, especially that tip tip tap tap sound and it becomes even more irritating when you're going to sleep. But there were many mathematicians and physicists who couldn't go to sleep because of uh, this. Not because of the tap, tip tip tap tap sound, but because the sound itself changes whenever you try to close the tap. Why is that? What is it uh, that this flow of water is changing about so much that uh, we are getting a different sound every time? So to understand that, let's understand how liquids flow. Okay. So through experimentation and observation, we came to know that liquids flow in two ways. One is what we call as a laminar flow. And laminar flow is like an obedient child. It listens to you following the path that you told it to. And in short, it's a very nice streamlined flow. And then there is turbulence. Yes, the names of it gave away. Turbulence is like a problem child. It never listens to you, never follows the path you have told it to. And in short, it is just totally out of control. Turbulence is so bad that it is one of the biggest open problems of physics even now. Yes. And although it might seem like turbulent and uh, laminar flow are so different, they are nothing but two sides of the same coin. So in this animation, you would see that I've got an incense stick from which smoke is coming out. And smoke is also a fluid in that form. And this smoke, while it's coming out, it is actually in a streamline. And then uh, as it expands, it becomes turbulent. And if you allow it to diffuse for long enough, it becomes laminar again. So laminar is giving turbulence, which is giving laminar again. So how does it help our plumbers become millionaires? Let's look at a plumbing problem. And for this, imagine a big city. For us, we can imagine the city of Mumbai and say that Mumbai had just one huge water tank which would be supplying water to the whole of Mumbai. Each and every household would be getting water from that tank. Certainly, you would require very complicated pipelines for that. Now, the task in front of a plumbers is to tell us that, okay, fine, you have got this uh, water tank which is filled with water and everyone uh, switches on their taps. Can they tell us exactly what would be the flow of water coming out from each of those taps? Before that, that, is it even possible to tell such a thing? It seems easy. It should be possible, right? It's nothing but easy. So uh, I'll be a bit more pedantic over here and describe things mathematically. And uh, since we are working with a moving liquid over here, I would just put some restriction on the movement. And this restriction is something which all of you would agree with. I'm just going to say that, well, you can't uh, do Harry Potter magic over here. You can't magically create or destroy water. Okay. So magically creating water would be equivalent to saying that we are having an inflow of water. Okay. Which is positive divergence, which is not allowed. Similarly, you cannot magically destroy water, which corresponds to an outflow of water, which is negative divergence. Again, not allowed. Since both positive and negative divergence are not allowed, the only possibility is to have a zero divergence. This is just a fancy mathematical way of saying that uh, the law, of, the mass of water was conserved. So this is just law of conservation of mass. Now, uh, let's be a bit more lazy and just use some uh, high school physics to talk about things in motion. I'm talking about a very famous Newton's second law of motion, which states that the rate of change of momentum is nothing but the sum of the forces. Okay. And uh, we know that the mass is getting conserved, so the mass is a constant. I can take it outside my momentum, right? Momentum means just mass times velocity. And uh, then we can agree that the force being applied on this fluid can either be internal or external. So external force can be like, I mean, if it's a river, it can be gravity. If it's uh, tight, then it would be the attraction to moon. If it's a, a whole uh, tank uh, and pipeline, then it would be just the pumps. What about internal forces? So internal forces, as the name suggests, is coming out because of what's happening inside the liquid. And what's inside the liquid? The molecules, right? So the molecules, they can collide with each other and that can give us pressure coming in. And uh, the molecules going close by to each other or, uh, would be something like a friction equivalent, which is viscosity. So uh, let's put all this together. And now we have this whole equation. We can divide this whole equation by the volume, by the volume element over there. 
and uh, mass by volume would be nothing but the density which would be constant for this whole equation right makes it easier now uh, the pressure term if uh, we write it mathematically that, that comes out to be the minus delta p okay similarly uh, the viscosity term terms uh, comes out to be mu times delta e, uh, delta square u and then we have got the separate external force ta da this is the navier stokes equation and this is the navier stokes equation only for waters which are flowing like water okay so this is just one of the navier stokes equation there are many other navier stokes equation okay this equation seems simple right but it took philosophers and physicists and mathematicians a long time to come to this and uh, i'd just like to journey through a few of them namely leonardo da vinci daniel bernoulli agustin cauchy leonard euler and there were many others whom i didn't include because i didn't have any slide space but they were major contributors as well but finally it was the uh, stroke of genius of the two people claude and louis navier and sir george stokes they were able to get this equation perfectly and hence they became the savior of all plumbers in existence Okay, so we have reached a point where we have got a very nice uh, problem, and we have got a mathematical equation to describe that problem. Is it still that difficult? Yes, it is so difficult that in the year 2000, Clay Mathematics Institute put forward a seven uh, put forward seven millennium problems. The Navier-Stokes equation, as you can see, is highlighted as one of the seven millennium problems. The Poincaré conjecture was solved by Gregory Perelman, but here's the thing: the other six questions are still open, and uh, you can try to solve any one of them and you will become a millionaire but i'd just like to give you a friendly reminder they are the most problem um, the most difficult problems that we know of that exist in mathematics yes. so uh, the statement over there said navier stokes existence and smoothness so uh, the existence if we are looking at a pipeline example is by saying that well we have got this whole system with water and pipelines. Is it even possible for the plumbers to tell us what would happen or what is the flow over there without switching, without actually uh, getting things in motion? Is it even possible to find a solution? That is existence. And smoothness is saying that if I was to change my pipeline just a bit, just a bit, I mean a small change, the uh, change in my flow of water should not be too large. It should be manageable. Okay, so we have seen this equation, we have seen what the statement is, how is it useful? So I'll give you all a few applications, I mean, instead of speaking about that. So weather forecasting is nothing but uh, being able to predict some uh, fluids, which we call as clouds and winds, and their movements, right? And I mean, it should be obvious that yes, we can use the Navier-Stokes and that is what exactly is being used. But because this is a very complicated system and uh, we don't exactly know how to solve Navier-Stokes for uh, systems like this, we have to use what we call as a numer uh, numerically averaged solution. And this numerically averaged solution ha has a tendency to blow up at times. And this is the reason why weather forecasts are not so accurate mostly. I mean, ocean current certainly uh, are nothing but fluids in motion, right? So they can uh, be predicted by a navier Stokes. And it's not just ocean currents. We can even uh, monitor climate change with uh, navier Stokes. And whenever uh, there was this very nice experiment in which people uh, figured out if we are dumping uh, waste in one part of an ocean, then how the currents are going to take this uh, waste and uh, congregate it at another point. This was a very nice application of uh, navier Stokes to understand how our pollution is changing the oceans. Now, F1 racing cars get everyone's heart racing, right? But imagine F1 racing cars can take turns at 250 miles per hour. So for that, they need to be very aerodynamic. And they use the average navier Stokes equations extensively in simulations. Well, certainly along with uh, wind, uh, the wind tunnel uh, experiments, of course. Even NASA had used the Navier-Stokes equation uh, to uh, analyze how the solid propellant rockets uh, would be working. But now with the advent of 3D printers, uh, we can 3D print thrusters and these thrusters have been made optimized by using the Navier-Stokes so that we can have a better thrust to exhaust ratio. 
it is even being used in drug delivery especially when we are trying uh, trying to deliver a drug which can be useful for one organ and can be harmful for another imagine if i actually want to deliver a drug which is uh, going to kill some cancer cells i don't want the other cells to get it because those would also get killed so uh, i need to have a way so that if i'm pinpointing one artery i should know exactly where the drug would follow and by putting in equation uh, the heart the pumping from the heart and the way the uh, arteries are we can exactly do that using navier stokes now you all might remember that we had this external force term right and if in the external force term i was to put electromagnetism then we would land in this domain of what we call as magneto hydrodynamics so uh, it is something which lets us understand how the way stars are formed and not just that it also tells us how they have magnetic fields create solar flares or even magnetic storms this is just to say that the navier stokes is not just uh, being used in your pipelines and faucets it is also right here in your heart and up there in the sky so here's the thing what do scientists mathematicians and plumbers know about this equation we know close to nothing but when i say we know close to nothing we do know that if the initial velocities are very small then what the solution would be because that is a laminar flow we also have a way of uh, understanding average solutions and this is exactly what we used in uh, predicting weather and doing other things but now imagine this that we knew close to nothing and we still had so many amazing applications imagine a world in which we actually knew a lot about the navier stokes i hope that all of you were convinced that this was not a ponzi scheme every one of you can become billionaires especially the plumbers Thank you.